Hello there, people of the internet. I'm out here showing in a history of basically everything that I have inside of my own personal arsenal, all of my guns and whatnot, talking about history and development, why they exist, where they came from, things like that. And I'm doing this in an effort to earn my way up to 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to help me reach that milestone, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If not, I understand. I'll try again tomorrow because I'm trying to upload one of these videos every single day. Don't always work out like that, but I am trying. So this right here is a Vetterly rifle chambered in 6.5 Carcano, sort of. Modern 6.5 Carcano, or just full power 6.5 Carcano in general, uh, is not safe to run in these rifles. The systems were originally black powder, and it's just not strong enough to be able to handle the pressures of 6.5 Carcano. So first, let's talk about the Vetterly system in general. But before we talk about that, let's go ahead and branch back to where this system came from. So during the 1860s or so, leaning into the 1870s, uh, muzzle loaders were very much a predominant technology for the time period, but it was clear that these were becoming more antiquated designs. As cartridges were starting to become uh, a more effective reloading source, with lack of better terminology, uh, for rifles, breech loaders were becoming a thing, and a very, very regular thing. That sun is just in the wrong place. But breech loaders were becoming a regular thing with cartridge firing technology. And with the advent of these breech loaders, eventually the breech loaders of bolt action origin would ascend into uh, repeating rifles. Countries all over the world were trying to figure out how to get their breech loaders to be able to have multiple cartridges inside of their system. So whenever they cycle whatever mechanical system it is that they have, they have a magazine or feeding system that pulls a round out of that magazine or feeding system and loads it into the breech of that chamber so you would have multiple shots inside of your firearm. This time period was very experimental in terms of all of the different uh, platforms that were coming out. And the Vetterly system eventually adopted its way to being one of these systems that was sort of kind of like a, a single shot breech loader that adopted its way into having a magazine fed system now during this time period whenever this system was being made black powder was still the predominant thing and i don't believe that uh, smokeless powder had even been invented yet by the french they invented smokeless powder in 1886 if memory serves me correctly and originally these rifles were chambered in a 10.5 or 11 millimeter i can't quite remember a, a very large diameter projectile with black powder behind it, simply because black powder was not that great of a propellant, it was more of an explosive than a propellant, and so as a result, it couldn't really launch projectiles all that quickly. Like, absolutely screaming speeds for black powder is like 1,700 feet per second, but more often than not, you'd see it more along the lines of 14 to 1,500 feet per second. Well, in order to get around that lack of speed, you use a really heavy projectile to put as much energy onto target as you can. Now, turning of the century, French make smokeless powder, and now everyone is scrambling to have repeating rifles that are fed with smokeless powder. Italy ultimately ends up adopting their Carcano, 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 however it is you want to pronounce that. They ended up adopting their Carcano series. I'm just going to say Carcano because that's what I've called it for my entire life. And they see that they have a tremendous stockpile of these Vetterly rifles still in stock. Well, they decide to, because of upcoming World War I, they decide to go ahead and convert a lot of these old stock rifles into the new 6.5 Carcano chambering. They sleeve the barrel for a 6.5 millimeter diameter, and I've heard some questionable things about these barrel sleeves. I haven't had any issues with this particular one. But uh, the system just doesn't have any locking resources or recesses on the front of the system. It's just not not a good design for smokeless powder. Smokeless powder generates a tremendous amount more pressure than black powder does. And so as a result, these right here are just not designed to be able to handle those pressures. And these right here are not... I, I don't want to say that they're not safe because there are ways to make them safe. But they're not ideal for firing the 6.5 Carcano. Now, I definitely don't want to do it with full power 6.5 Carcano. That's a really good way to blow up one of these rifles. But you undercharge that 6.5 Carcano ammunition. 
and you can run these pretty gosh darn effectively. I know I've ran this particular one pretty gosh darn effectively. I've even made videos about me uh, shooting this thing. Now, that being said, this particular one, I know I said that I'm going to run and gun uh, all the guns that I bring out here, but this particular one is having some safety issues with our trigger and firing pin system. For example, if I hold the trigger forward like this, the firing pin is just so barely caught on that trigger sear that if I smack this or jumble it around, it will fire. And that is a huge safety precaution because if I just, if I jiggle this the wrong way or something like this, if I maneuver it a little too harshly, I could potentially send a 6.5 round off into the distance somewhere. And we definitely don't want that. So I'm not going to fire this thing. I'm currently working on uh, fixing that problem. So I hate to tell you guys, but this one's not going to be fired. So World War I comes around and these rifles right here were intended to be for uh, non frontline soldiers. Basically, uh, basically the Italians knew that these right here were not going to be ideal for the 6.5 Carcan around. They knew that it would not be able to withstand the pressures and they kind of gave these out to people that they figured were not going to be fighting. But if they were going to fight, then they are yeah, there you go. You have yourself a rifle of some kind to be able to defend yourself. Now, the idea of these rifles was also kind of leaning into a last-ditch style of rifle. If the Italians uh, needed a, a last-ditch style of rifle, like, hey, we're out of Carcanos, but the enemy's here. We need guns. We need them now. Grab those old Vettelli rifles, and those are going to be better than nothing. And that's kind of the uh, mindset that the Italians were going, or going towards. Now, whether or not that actually happened... That remains to be seen. I have heard stories about how these were very much used on the front lines. I've heard stories about how they were absolutely not used on the front lines. I do know that the intentions, whenever these were originally being converted, was that they were not going to be used on the front lines. So I don't have a bayonet for it, but this does have a bayonet lug on it up there. Looks like it is milled directly into our barrel itself. And then we have ourselves a nice full length wood stock on this. No upper handguard to protect your hand from that barrel. Looks like our rear sight here is very Italian looking. There's a push button on the side that appears to let you adjust for elevation. This one's a little on the sticky side though, and I don't really want to force that. So I'm just going to leave that right there as is. The Vettelie system on the back, the bolt itself does not rotate. And this is one of the things that really leads it to not be a very strong system. The bolt itself does not rotate. Instead, the locking surface, which is separate from the bolt itself, rotates at the back of the bolt whenever you uh, operate the bolt handle. So the bolt itself is just one stationary piece, and all it does is it presses forward onto the back of the chamber, and that is what holds your cartridge in. Now these can be some strong systems, but the Vetterly system is just not strong. It's just not strong the way that the system is designed. So just bear that in mind. If you decide to go ahead and put smokeless powder through a black powder rifle, you got to pay attention to what it is that you're doing because a lot of these old guns are simply not designed for, uh, for that. So this particular one has the date 1877 on the side of the receiver. So that is likely whenever this one here was manufactured. And then, of course, it was converted to 6.5 Carcano, Carcano by the Italians. Now, this one did come out of Ethiopia. We do have ourselves one of those uh, Italian-Ethiopian stamps right there on the buttstock. So that right there tells me exactly where it is that this came from. This was brought back and uh, uh, this was surplus to the civilian market not too terribly long ago. I decided to go ahead and pick myself up one of these. So I don't think that I have anything else to add with the Vetterly rifle. I think we've pretty much covered everything. With Italy adopting the 6.5 Carcano and the 6.5 Carcano rifle, of course this right here would be uh, replaced by the Carcano. And these right here would see service in a lot of non-frontline roles and they would be surplused out to all sorts of different countries as uh, war aids and reparations and things like that and that's pretty much the entire story behind this rifle so i don't have anything else to add i'm just going to say hey thanks for watching folks i appreciate your time like subscribe share description below it has a link to all sorts of stuff go check it out you guys go off have yourself a fantastic day
I'll see you guys on the next episode. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.